Good day. Welcome to Peterborough Matters. My name is Paul Rellinger, and of course, I'm joined by Her Worship, Mayor Diane Terry. And uh, as we start every show uh, as of late, uh, I want to ask, how are you doing, Diane? Uh, it's uh, another week, two months, uh, approximately, since uh, since the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, really hit us locally. Yeah, I, again, like I've said, March was a really long month. April flew by and we're already basically almost halfway through May. So, um, and, and May has been interesting, as you know, weather-wise. Uh, today's kind of nice. It was snowing yesterday. Um, so that keeps things interesting, certainly. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've been keeping business of council rolling. We had a meeting last night, which we're going to talk a little bit about, which relates to a lot of the the goings on of COVID-19. But um, you know, I'm, you know, doing well. And again, uh, city staff and all the folks throughout the city dealing with things that we didn't think we were going to have to deal with three months ago. So I think everybody's doing a, a great job at pulling together and working, working to get through this. And, and you know this as well as anybody. I mean, we can feel overwhelmed, especially when we're in a position of responsibility such as you are. Uh, but you really have to rely on your people. Um, and, uh, and it sounds like you've got some great people around you at City Hall who are really uh, lending their expertise and, and more importantly, lending their support. Yeah, for sure. Uh, people have been working really hard and, you know, not just to focus on City Hall because there's people across the, the city that are doing that and certainly folks that work for the city that aren't at City Hall. You know, our, our public works guys have been out, guys and gals, I guess, have been out uh, and our, you know, waste management collectors, you know, everybody uh, that's maybe aren't the same, you know, when we talk about frontline heroes, we're not always recognizing everybody that's on the front line. Uh, and so, yeah, they, they've all been pulling together and, and helping us get through this. And, as, and, and it's so kind of you not to bring it up, but as you can see, there's been one effect, bad effect of the uh, COVID-19 uh, <laughs> situation here at the Rellinger household. Uh, I've learned very quickly the worst uh, words you wanna hear when someone is giving you a haircut is oh oh yeah or whoops <laughs> or whoops. I'll even that out on the other side yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it all works out in the wash so uh let's yeah, get down go. to it um we heard from uh premier ford i believe yesterday and i think it's being debated as we speak uh that the emergency order the province-wide emergency order is going to be extended it looks like until june 2nd um, is that what you kind of anticipated and do you kind of plan for that even though it really hasn't happened yet? Yeah, so when the province uh, rolled out their their plan to reopen the economy a couple weeks ago, they had these two and four week timelines in it and the emergency order operates under that sort of two week period where they reevaluate. And so while they've also been, you know, um, releasing and changing the orders to permit more businesses to reopen under, you know, very, quite strict conditions and rightfully so, uh, I think it wasn't that surprising to anyone that the emergency order would still remain in effect. You know, that helps make sure that, um, you know, one of the big concerns that I've heard about and talked about with other folks is, you know, our southern border. And um, so one of the benefits of making sure that we're still operating under that emergency scenario is that we're not having people come and go into the province um, without good reason. And, and we've done, you know, I say we, I mean the province and everyone in it have done a very good job at um, abiding by physical distancing and abiding by the regulations and the advice from medical professionals uh, which is part of why we're able to start slowly reopening and talk about that. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, a couple days of, of being too lax and it could set us back quite far. So, And, and I'm sure, uh, Diane, that you've heard this, um, but just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on it. Uh, we look at some other provinces. I know they're going back to school in Quebec. Uh, New Brunswick is opening up all sorts of stuff uh theaters Alberta, yeah and uh you know people look at that and they're saying well you know why not us and what what's your answer to that what what's your take on that yeah i mean it's a it's an interesting question and again it comes down to a provincial decision and they have been very open that they're going by uh you know the numbers and advice i mean some of the smaller provinces that you know ontario's the 
the largest population center. We have a lot of international travel. We have, um, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of sort of mitigating circumstances that make us different than uh, a province like New Brunswick. Um, although Alberta's, you know, is similar has the international airports and and they've sort of started to reopen things, albeit under very different mm-hmm. conditions, right? Um, you know, I'm happy that Ontario isn't sort of the first to be, you know, experimenting with that. So it will be interesting to see how things go in Alberta and in some of those other provinces in terms of, you know, having restaurants open, but, you know, 50% capacity and what that kind of looks like. Um, Because we know we want, you know, ideally, we'd love to reopen tomorrow, but we also know that health and safety is, is a priority and we don't want to have numbers spike again that we have to go back to square one which is what i've been saying all along is is the reason that we need to be strict right now unfortunately Mm -hmm. and i agree totally with you to err on the side of caution is probably the most prudent thing to do right now um kind of want to bring things a little bit more up up to date um city council has heard that the city can expect to lose uh close to seven million dollars in revenues uh, that were lost from about mid-March to June. Um, a lot of that coming from transit. Uh, buses parked, don't make money. Nope. Uh, now, I know I know downtown parking enforcement has just restarted again, but a chunk of money uh, w- was lost from that as well. Then you got the casino revenue that's obviously not coming in or is kind of on hold right now. Um, your thoughts on that shortfall? Is it about what you expected? And... Uh, there are a couple of options. Uh, there's there's discussion. Uh, I guess there's only a couple of ways you can recoup money, and one is a tax hike, uh, and the other one is possibly dipping in the reserves. Um, your thoughts on this? Well, and the other option that uh, you know is the, the preferred one in my view is uh, was put forward in the report from staff last night to advocate, which the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, as well as the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, to our senior levels of government to help municipalities out through this time. So municipalities are not allowed to run a deficit. And, um, and in normal years, quote unquote normal years, that's not so much a problem. Uh, this has been a very exceptional year. Uh, and we know that you know, their senior levels of government have more tools to generate revenue. They have the ability to uh, go after people that, um, and corporations that aren't paying their fair share of taxes. Uh, which we know is in the billions and billions of dollars per year. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the suggestions and recommendations from staff was to continue to work with AMO and FCM to lobby the province and the feds to provide um, grants to municipalities to help us get through that. So that's why my preferred option, obviously, is to, you know, get some of those, uh, you know, offshore tax evaders to actually be putting the money back into their local economies in their country. Um, you know, because transit, transit never makes money. And transit isn't something that is supposed to make money. You know, it's an essential service and we provide it because as a, as a municipality, you need to help your residents get where they need to go. And so um, that's, you know, that's a longstanding debate about transit. But um, we we've never expected it to turn a profit, and it's and in my view, it's not necessarily supposed to. Um, that's right. that's not its function. Its function is to be an essential service. Um, but you're right. You know, we have had the lost revenue not just through that, but the closure of facilities, uh, the property tax deferrals, um, and so that's the other tricky scenario is that we've had these property tax deferrals because we know. Uh, people have been laid off or or working less hours or there's a lot of financial uncertainty. Um, But if folks had to defer their property uh, taxes at the end of March, which was only, you know, a couple weeks into the crisis, they're not going to have that money at the end of May and they're not going to have that money for a major tax hike. So um, Mm -hmm. those are all questions that are going to come back to council uh, during our budget meetings. And um, we're continuing to look into how we can sort that out going forward. Yeah, and you know, and it goes without saying that uh, uh, the finance staff at City Hall uh, certainly earn their salary every year <laughs> because that's a, that's a tough job. But uh, for sure, but man, man, this is uh, this is kind of unprecedented, as you said. And and um, uh, are are you optimistic that the province or other levels of government are are hearing what municipalities are saying and 
and will come through in some form? Uh, so, I mean, they, both the province and the feds have unveiled all kinds of new programs and funding. Uh, and, you know, the federal government announced the other day they're funding for really large businesses. And, um, you know, so, you know, the money, the thing is, the money is, can be found. Uh, it's just a matter of, of prioritizing an equitable distribution, which, which I've sort of talked about. And so I know that at the local level, our MPP and our MP have been hearing this message from not just myself, but others in the county and First Nations um, about, you know, the, uh, the situation that we're in. And they, and they hear that and have assured us that they're relaying that message to their colleagues uh, and to their cabinets and their peers at Queen's Park and at Parliament Hill. So um, I am cautiously optimistic. Uh, I mean, again, there's 444 municipalities in Ontario and, and many more than that across the country, but we're all in sort of the same boat. But ultimately, you know, the local level is the best suited to provide advice on how to come to solutions. Um, yeah. To the, you know, because things are so different across the whole, across the country. And if you're in, you know, bureaucrats in Toronto and Ottawa are working hard on those things, but they need to hear from the smaller communities about what's going to work there. And uh, one, one um, and you alluded to it earlier, but one uh, indication that we're returning to some kind of level of normalcy slowly, uh, although probably not the one people prefer, is that downtown parking enforcement yeah. <laughs> uh, is, is being started again. Uh, and wh wh why now? Um, what, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. I, I really have no opinion on it at all. But uh, is, there, is there a reason why that's happening now? And is it part of a, of a determined plan moving forward? So from, you know, from the staff sort of perspective and recommendation, um, it was tied into the uh, announcements from the province about the sort of gradual reopening of businesses and curbside pickups. And um, so, you know, part of the issue that we have with downtown parking and part of the reason that there's a two hour limit is that you want to ensure that there's turnover um, and that folks that aren't just parking there all day. Um, mm. And so part of the reinstating the enforcement um, was to make sure that businesses that are going to be able to reopen are going to be able to have parking out front of their doors and that employees or other folks aren't necessarily just parking there and staying mm -hmm. there. So, you yeah. know, because the revenue piece is, is minimal that we make from that. Um, mm -hmm. So it is more about ensuring that businesses that are going to reopen are able to offer that parking. You're watching uh, Peterborough Matters with Mayor Diane Terrian. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back to Peterborough Matters. My name is Paul Relinger, and of course, with me is Mayor Diane Terrian. Uh, it would be great, Diane, if we could talk about something be else besides uh, COVID-19, but that's not going to happen. Because not today. <laughs> it just seems to be the big topic of discussion, and rightly so. Um, StatsCan has reported uh, on the job situation um, locally. Uh, estimates being what they are. They estimate that about 4,700 people have uh, lost their jobs from February to about the end of April. That's folks here in the city. Um, is that number about what you, again, what you expected to see? Uh, your thoughts on that are, you know, are we, I, I know uh, on a wider perspective across, um, across Canada, that rate is 13%. So we're actually, uh, right. compared to the national rate, we're actually doing quite well. And that's got to be somewhat encouraging. Yeah, it's, you know, it's tricky because there's also so many people that, you know, maybe we're working full time that are now working part time. We know that some of the biggest drivers in our local economy are, um, you know, the hospitality industry and tourism in the summer, which we're only starting to feel the impacts of and are only going to get worse. So, I mean, I think, you know, it doesn't sound as, it doesn't sound necessarily that bad, but I do think that people are in much um, 
more dire straits than that. So even a lot of our, uh, you know, local restaurants and shops that are trying to do curbside pickup or online kind of thing, they're still really struggling mm -hmm. with revenues being way down. Uh, and they maybe only have on, uh, and I've heard from some, you know, restaurant owners and others that while they had to lay off staff temporarily, even when they reopen, uh, if it looks like what it does in Alberta or wherever, where it's a 50% sort of capacity, um, they're not going to be bringing back all their staff. They're only mm -hmm. going to be bringing back a couple of their staff. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, it is a situation that I think is going to get, um, get worse. I think that the federal and provincial governments recognize that as well. Uh, and so I know that they've been working on the programs that they've rolled out and how they can adapt them, how they can make sure that they're meeting those needs. Uh, and, you know, there are some places that are doing, doing better during this crisis, but that's, you know, that's a minority, I think, uh, of businesses, yeah. although it does, um, you know, in some cases does present an opportunity to figure out how to retool. And that's part of, I know that you had a, a question for later about the recovery piece and what that looks like. And we know that the, and we talked about it last week, the, the mayor and warden's economic task force. And at the city level too, I have uh, inter more internal task forces that are rolling that are looking at not just the economic, but the social and environmental pieces. Um, because how can we, out of, this, out of this pandemic, figure out how to position our, our community, our economy to be resilient, to be sustainable, to be able to deal with not just challenges such as pandemics going forward, but climate change and, you know, the evolving nature of the economy that has been going on for, you know, over a decade anyways. So, you know, it's, it's certainly not an ideal situation, but there's a lot of moving pieces behind the scenes to figure out, okay, how do we climb back? How do we work together? How do we help businesses that, um, you know, are able to adapt to do so. And PCAD and a lot of those guys have been instrumental in helping some, you know, manufacturers retool to be able to meet needs around PPE and those kinds of things. Um, yeah. But there's also a broader conversation outside of the health piece um, that how do folks respond to localized needs going forward? Because I think one of the, uh, and this is speculation, but one of the outcomes I think uh, that will happen out of this pandemic is, which was kind of already happening prior is more of a turn to the local economy and supporting locally and how can we make sure that we're able to support ourselves and support each mm -hmm. other um, and not have to rely on, you know, overseas uh, product, which, you know, as we know, during a pandemic is harder to get, but also when we're talking about climate change and the climate emergency, we'd rather be able to uh, procure and build things locally. So yeah. yeah and you and you, again you raised an excellent point and uh and and again i'm no i'm no expert on international affairs but um i see a couple of things kind of emerging from from this situation i think there's going to be first of all a new economy that we're yep. going to have to get used to i don't know what that's going to look like but it's not going to be the same <laughs> as it was two months ago uh and i think the other thing too is we're going to see a return uh, and you, again, you alluded to it in your in your comments. I think we're going to see a bit of a return to isolationism uh, as a country. Um, I mm -hmm. think there's a, there's a recognition that, man, we gotta we gotta be a little more reliant on ourselves as opposed to other people. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know yep. if that's right or wrong, but I see that happening. Yeah, and I mean we've heard that kind of conversation level uh, from you know the higher levels of government as well, uh, and we saw that play out when PPE was something that, or personal protective equipment was something that was hard to come by a couple months ago. And so again, a lot of our local companies have been working really hard to retool on that front. Um, but so it brings up all these issues that were problems before, but weren't in the spotlight. Uh, and that yeah. is, you know, a broader conversation. And we've seen, you know, when we talk about our downtown, um, there's a lot of businesses that have been uh, really successful in the last couple of years because they their specialty is around, you know, locally made, locally procured, handmade goods that people are uh, increasingly willing to pay a little bit more for um, because they'd rather be supporting their community than relying on something that's getting, you know, either sh uh, shipped over or flown over from, you know, overseas. And so I think 
uh, particularly as, uh, as that discussion around climate keeps going on, even though it hasn't been, you know, sort of been on the back burner while we're talking about this pandemic, but really they're intertwined, you know, and, and we see that because of mm -hmm. the, you know, globalization and the way that the pandemic um, it has spread and the, the issue around borders is an example of that. So closing borders and mm -hmm. uh, to folks, but not goods and how, you know, how, what's that going to look like in the future? I don't necessarily know, but it is going to be very different than what we saw before. Is there a bit of a fear or maybe, maybe it's just, <laughs> maybe it's just my mind racing that uh, and, and maybe making too much out of it. But uh, when we talk about businesses, um, they've managed to do business with less staff uh, mm -hmm. through this situation. Uh, as we return to some level again of normalcy, uh, you know, once you know you can get by with less staff, you tend to go with less staff. And uh, uh, like I'm afraid, but again, I could be way off base that there will be some businesses out there that will say, you know what, you know, we had this many people before. Yeah. But we were able to do okay with this number of people uh, and some of those jobs won't come back. Yeah. I mean, I think that's certainly, that's certainly a piece of it. You know, there's also the, the, the piece around um, office space and real estate. So we had this discussion got brought up last night at city hall about, you know, I'm at city hall today and there's, you know, the parking lot, there's maybe 20 cars in it. So we know that a lot of folks can work from home. It's not always ideal. And certainly that's, you know, discussion that's been going on, but um, there are mm -hmm. going to be some businesses that realize why do we need to spend, you know, X amount of thousands of dollars on um, office space in a downtown or somewhere if we can have our people work from home. So, you know, there's yeah. those two pieces are going to be really interesting coming out of this. Uh, and yeah, and I don't have an answer for that. I'm not sure what it's going to look like, but certainly um, there's going to be a lot of discussion around, well, do people then retool, retrain? What does that look like? You know, I mean, there's also been a lot of discussions around mm -hmm. universal basic income, which would be something that, you know, if there was a time to implement it, it would be now. And the CERB is a bit of a, a step in that direction. Um, and provincially, you know, we had mm -hmm. pilots that got pulled. Um, so I think it's such an interesting time that we're in for policy decision-making going forward and what things are going to look like. Um, and that's why it's really important to have ongoing lines of communication with senior levels of government, with the community to figure out, uh, because the decisions that we're making now are going to impact our community and our world, the world as we know it, for the, for the foreseeable future. Absolutely. Um, as you know, um, just this morning, uh, Peterborough Music Fest has canceled its season, or I shouldn't say canceled, postponed. Uh, because yeah. they will um, hold season 34 in 2021. Uh, Fourth Line Theatre has canceled its first play uh, play of the summer. Uh, Taste of Charlotte, uh, Peterborough Pulse have been um, canceled by the DBIA. Um, you know, you, you're, you're like me, you're an athlete and you have to run. Um, and uh, it's looking like the ball season uh, and many other summer activities are in jeopardy as well. Yeah. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenging summer. I mean, that's the time when people get out and man, I, I, we, we talk about enforcing the rules and social distancing rules as they are, um, up to this point, we've done pretty well, but it's going to get tougher. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. And, uh, I think again, um, it's about getting that message out that people of course want to be outside, especially when the weather gets nicer, if, if it ever does. Um, but it's supposed to, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's not really an answer. I know that there's been a lot of, uh, you know, I've had birthday parties on zoom with people and there's that kind of interaction. Um, it's not ideal, but I know there's a lot of people, you know, mental health and wellness is a really big issue that has come up, um, during this crisis because people feel so isolated. So, it, you know, encouraging people to reach out that way. I know that there, the idea of going on sort of social distance or physical distancing walks is become more popular, but you're right. If everybody decides to do that, then your trails get really crowded and, and what do you do? So, I mean, again, the, you know, the message that I've been saying all along and that uh, I think others have been trying to reiterate as well is the importance of 
uh, abiding by those now because otherwise it's just going to last longer. Uh, yeah. And so our, our numbers, you know, knock on wood have been, um, you know, fairly positive, like fairly good in Ontario in terms of we haven't seen some of the um, really high spikes or really high caseloads that uh, some other jurisdictions have seen. Uh, and part of that is because uh, people have been very respectful and, and, and smart about abiding by those protocols, but it's, it's not easy. It's not easy for anyone. Um, you know, even introverts, I know, which sometimes I am, you know, you can still go a little bit stir crazy. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't really know what advice to give aside from, you know, learning to knit or something. <laughs> and uh, there's probably and, a lot of you know knitting you... stores, probably yarn stores are doing really well right now if they can deliver. Absolutely. And, uh, and I, I imagine Kobo is not doing too bad either. Um, there you go. And, yeah. and, and Diane, you, you touched on a very good point as we wrap up here. Uh, just to remind people, and, and I know you'd agree that, you know, if there's someone out there that needs support uh, and you can do it virtually, just do it because the, yeah. the, men, the mental health aspect of, of this is, uh, is, I think, in many ways greater than the physical outcome uh, that could happen. So, uh, yeah. you know, let's, let's just embrace each other and, and do the best we can. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen senior levels of government put increasing funding into mental health supports because we all recognize that people are, you know, it's not just the isolation, it's people that are, you know, have been laid off or their businesses can't run. It's really, it's, just, it's depressing, it's demoralizing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so um, there are avenues for help. And, uh, you know, I personally am very grateful to the province and the feds for recognizing that mental health is a big piece of this. Uh, and it's going to continue to be. So having those conversations is key and reaching out to one another uh, is, is so important. You're watching Peterborough Matters. That's it for this week. Diane, please stay safe and uh, we'll get to do this all again next week. Thanks so much Thank for you. watching. Thank you.